welcome to lesson two. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, uh, so in this lesson, uh, we will move our discussion from uh, project-based learning to project-based language learning. And unlike PBL, which is a broader term that is uh, used across many educational contexts and subjects domains, uh, project-based language learning applies specifically to the domain of second or foreign language education. So um, in this lesson, we will talk about um, how, what language teachers need to know and consider when adapting project-based learning to the context of language learning and teaching. And for this purpose, we will revisit the um, eight essentials of uh, project-based learning that Stephen uh, has just talked about in lesson one. And we will examine how each of these elements can be adapted to the context of language learning and teaching. And in addition to that, we will also discuss how project-based language learning can help um, improve learners' knowledge of the target language and culture uh, following the World Readiness Standards for Learning Languages. Okay, so uh, one of the primary goals of uh, language education in general is to help learners improve their language knowledge. And um, uh, when PBL is implemented in the language uh, learning context, uh, the development of learners' language knowledge becomes the focus of the project alongside the development um, of their content knowledge. And this dual goal is reflected in the project overview table, which you can find in the project, project blueprint. And uh, just to remind you, the project blueprint is a document that you will need to complete um, by the end of the fundamentals of PPL Online Institute uh, in order to earn a badge, a digital badge. So uh, this project overview table uh, that you see uh, on your screen is from page two of the project blueprint. So this, um, this dual goal of, um, uh, of project-based learning um, uh, having to uh, uh, address the development of learners' language knowledge and content knowledge is uh, reflected in this table. So uh, when you work on this table, when you complete this table, you will need to uh, address, um, uh, to explain what content knowledge and what language knowledge you will expect your students to acquire by the end of the project. And then in the third column, which is called performance assessment, uh, you will uh, need to say how you will assess what the learners, what the learners have learned, um, what they have, uh, how they will demonstrate what they have acquired in terms of the content knowledge and in terms of the language knowledge. So uh, in PBLL, one way to ensure that your project uh, will help learners improve their language knowledge is to follow the World Readiness Standards for Learning Languages. Uh, this is a document, these are the standards that provide a roadmap uh, to guide learners to develop their communicative competence in the target language by focusing on the five uh, goal areas, which are uh, communication, cultures, connections, comparisons, and communities. Um, so as suggested by the standards, uh, language knowledge is based on the uh, learner's ability to communicate effectively in three modes. And these are uh, interpersonal mode, interpretive mode, and presentational mode. Um, so uh, the, uh, for the interpersonal mode of communication, uh, this, uh, this mode involves the learner's ability to interact and negotiate meaning in spoken, signed, or written conversations to share information, reactions, feelings, and opinions. So um, communication in this mode presupposes the use of both productive and receptive skills. Uh, this is interactive, two-way uh, communication between the learner and the interlocutor. Uh, the second mode, uh, the interpretive uh, mode of communication, uh, uh, involves the ability, the learner's ability to understand, interpret, and analyze what is heard, read, or viewed on a variety of topics. So for learners to uh, function in this mode, they, they would uh, require, this mode requires primarily receptive skills. Uh, this is a non-interactive mode of communication, and it's a one-way. So learners interpret what they hear, see, um, or read. And the last mode of communication is the presentational uh, mode. So in a presentational communication, uh, for presentational communication to occur, the learners need to use primarily productive skills. Um, this is also a one-way, non-interactive uh, communication in which learners present information, concepts, or ideas to inform, explain, or persuade, narrate on a variety of topics. So they present information uh, to the audience of listeners, readers, or viewers. 
So in addition to, uh, to the communication, um, culture is also um, an important um, aspect in the standards. And um, we, uh, uh, what I would like to mention is that uh, when you look at the project overview table, we include a culture as part of language knowledge. So when you work on this table, uh, uh, when, when talking about how your project will um, help the learners develop their understanding of the target culture, uh, those things uh, should be mentioned in the language knowledge column. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on the um, topic of culture uh, in this lesson because um, we will talk, you will learn more about infusing culture in project-based language learning uh, in lessons 6 and 12. So uh, how can we as language teachers ensure that uh, project-based learning promotes and improves the development of language knowledge and culture? Uh, how do we move from PBL to PBLL? What makes project-based learning uh, project-based language learning. So to uh, to answer this question, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we we made uh, an initial attempt uh, to summarize how the um, eight essential elements of project-based learning can be adapted to the language learning and um, uh, teaching context, and what considerations uh, language teachers need to make when they uh, implement PBL in, in language uh, classrooms. So uh, this is the table um, in which, um, yeah, what I would like to point out is that uh, given that the uh, implementation of project-based learning in foreign language education is a relatively unexplored area, uh, there isn't much um, out there on PBL in the language uh, context specifically. Uh, we consider the ideas that we put together in the PBLL uh, column to be work in progress. And um, therefore, we also would greatly appreciate, or not appreciate, but we would welcome any comments or suggestions that you have uh, about this table. So if you have any uh, comments or suggestions um, at this table, you can leave them. Um, uh, um, so when you, when you do, when you work on lesson two, uh, when you do the reading, uh, under more to consider, uh, in the text, uh, you will see this uh, complete table with uh, eight essential elements, uh, both for um, the discussed PBLL, PBL and PBLL. Um, uh, there will be a link to a Google document with this table uh, where you can go and um, uh, leave your comments. So uh, this is the document, oh, I would say, yeah, this document contains the ideas that uh, many of which we will refer to in greater detail uh, throughout the five modules. So I will go um, through each of the essential elements uh, that Stephen has already talked about in the uh, in lesson one, and um, I will uh, try to demonstrate how we think uh, each of these elements can be adapted in PBLL um, context. So the first uh, the first essential element is significant content, and uh, as Stephen said. Um, in PBL, uh, the project uh, should focus on knowledge and concepts that are essential to understanding the topic. And uh, the, the content of the project in PBL should be significant for the students, should be meaningful uh, to the students, um, and uh, related, relevant to their lives and interests. So in PBLL, in P uh, project-based language learning, uh, content is usually associated with what is being learned and at what level of proficiency. So when we address content in language teaching, um, uh, the idea is that we can be guided by two types of uh, guidelines. Uh, the guidelines that, uh, help, uh, that can help us teachers to identify significant content, and these would be the uh, guidelines such as the World Readiness Standards for Learning Languages that I uh, mentioned earlier and also the guidelines that can help uh, teachers align the content with the proficiency levels. And uh, an example of this would be, for example, the actual proficiency guidelines or the ILR proficiency uh, scale. Uh, the uh, links to these guidelines that I've just mentioned are in the table that is in the reading for lesson two. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about the guidelines or um, reading them, uh, they, are, they are available in the reading. So uh, the, um, similar to PBL, the content in PBLL should reflect what the teacher thinks is essential content knowledge for learners to acquire. But in addition to that, uh, in PBLL, um, 
the teacher also needs to consider the essential language knowledge uh, that he or she uh, will expect the uh, students to acquire by the end of the project. So uh, the second essential element is a need to know. Um, and in PBL, uh, a need to know is uh, usually activated by the entry event, uh, which engages student interests and uh, interests and initiates uh, questioning. So the entry event helps the students to um, see the reason for the activities that they do throughout the project. The, the reason for learning relevant material becomes clearer to them. Uh, in PBLL, um, uh, in addition to uh, activating the learner's need to know the content, uh, in addition to activating their interest in the content knowledge, uh, the project uh, should also spark the learner's interest in learning about the target language and culture. So it should spark their interest in language knowledge, uh, which is associated with the topic of the project and necessary for completing it. Uh, the third essential element is a driving question. So in PBL, um, a good driving question, as Stephen has mentioned, captures the heart of the project. Uh, it should use clear, compelling language that um, gives students a sense of purpose and challenge. Uh, the driving question should be provocative, open-ended, complex, and linked to the core of what you want your students to learn. In PBLL, a good um, driving question should also challenge learners to increase their language proficiency and create a need for them to engage with the target culture using the target language. Uh, student voice and choice, the fourth essential element. Uh, in, PBL, uh, in PBL, as um, has already been mentioned in lesson one, uh, students should be given uh, some voice and choice, so they can be uh, they can choose, for example, how to design, create, and present products. They can be uh, provided with some options for um, um, for what they for, for what they want the final product of the project to be. Uh, they can also even be uh, given a, an option to select the topic of the project and uh, or a driving question. Um, in BBLL, it is important, in our opinion, to assess um, first the degree of learner autonomy uh, that is appropriate for the instructional uh, context, uh, uh, taking into account the, the language proficiency of the students and the expected uh, performance at the end of the project. So based on that assessment, based on the assessment of the degree of learner autonomy, then learners may be allowed to set their own uh, language learning goals. Uh, choose the topics uh, and products that uh, would um, give them opportunities to uh, produce the language, uh, negotiate the meaning in the target language. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the teacher should be um, ready to scaffold uh, students' use of the target language whenever uh, it is necessary during the project in order to uh, ensure that the language is comprehensible to them. So the, um, the idea of scaffolding is, um, is, is really critical and um, the, um, uh, ensuring that the language, the, uh, the, uh, the tasks, the, whatever the students do during the project uh, in PBLL is comprehensible to the students is one of the tasks that, uh, that the teacher uh, needs to um, monitor. Uh, the fifth Okay. The fifth essential uh, element is the 21st century skills. So, um, uh, as was already mentioned in lesson one, the project should uh, give uh, students the opportunity to uh, build and develop their 21st century skills, such as collaboration, uh, communication, critical thinking, the use of technology. Uh, in PBLL, uh, the, uh, these, uh, it is important for the teacher to uh, align the development of these 21st century skills with the modes of communication, uh, the three modes of communication that I mentioned earlier, um, uh, interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational. So uh, one of the uh, really useful documents that can be used uh, for that is the 21st century skills map. Uh, again, a link to this document is in the table uh, in the reading for lesson two. So. Um, 
uh, students in the PBLL environment should be encouraged to develop uh, their uh, 21st century skills using the target language in real world interactions with the target culture. So uh, whatever activity tasks um, you envision for the project, um, it is important to make sure that uh, the, uh, the development of the 21st century skills um, uh, happens uh, through the target language in uh, real world interactions. Uh, the sixth uh, essential element uh, is inquiry and innovation. So um, for, for a project, for a PBL project to be meaningful, uh, students need to be asked to conduct real inquiry and with that comes innovation. So in PBLL, uh, we think that the concept of authenticity uh, can be related to the um, idea of real inquiry. And um, for the, um, uh, for the, for the, uh, if the project generates the need to uh, meaningfully interact in the target language with the target culture, then that creates the conditions for the learners to engage in uh, authentic communication, uh, to discover new things related to the topic of the project. So uh, to conduct real inquiry in PBLL, uh, students should be encouraged to engage in uh, meaningful conversations uh, in the target language. Uh, they should be encouraged to use their oral and written communication skills to um, communicate the thoughts and ideas. Um, they should be encouraged to analyze and synthesize information from different sources that they will be using uh, while doing research on the topic uh, in different linguistics and cultural contexts. And um, uh, overall, they should be guided to discover new insights and find innovative solutions that represent diverse sociocultural perspectives. So the focus is on uh, language and culture. Uh, the seventh um, essential element, feedback and uh, revisions. So uh, in PBL, uh, as Stephen has mentioned, we uh, need to provide, uh, students need to be provided with feedback um, from the teacher, but they also need to be um, uh, explained which um, criteria are used for the evaluation of their work. They need to be given opportunities for uh, critiquing each other's work. Uh, uh, and also, it is important to explain to them that, uh, make it clear that revision is an indispensable part of um, the, the work, that in real world, um, uh, it rarely happens that uh, the first attempts result in high quality products, uh, that revision is, is, is important. So uh, in PBLL, to ensure that uh, students um, improve their language knowledge, uh, teachers uh, should provide uh, scaffolding, should, should scaffold students' use of the target language by providing language-specific feedback and um, uh, give students opportunities, again, to engage in um, a revision of each other's work, uh, to engage in self-evaluation, uh, peer feedback on the linguistic output uh, throughout the project. And the last essential element, the publicly presented product. So um, uh, for, the, uh, for the project, for, for, the, for the work that students do uh, during the project to be meaningful, uh, they need to be given an, an opportunity to present their work to a real audience um, outside of the uh, confines of the classroom. And uh, in some cases, in a, uh, in, in, instead of just replicating the kinds of tasks that um, would, the professionals would do in real world, it might be better in PBL to um, have students create real products that people outside of the class will actually use. So uh, in PBLL, uh, projects that culminate in artifacts um, that uh, are purposefully crafted for the use in the target uh, culture uh, create rich language learning opportunities for students uh, that also uh, allow them to gain an in-depth understanding of the culture. Uh, so such projects uh, give learners, uh, such for a project to be, um, uh, when publicly presenting product, students should be uh, given opportunities to use oral and written communicative, communicative skills as the vehicle to present their product, um, their work, what they've done for the project, uh, to the real audience outside of the classroom. Okay, so uh, just to reiterate again, uh, the ideas regarding how these eight essential elements of project-based 
learning can be adapted to PBLL uh, that I've just shown uh, in these slides are in the table uh, called from PBL to PBLL. Uh, again, as I said, this is our initial attempt to summarize how these essential elements uh, can be adapted for uh, language education context. Uh, the table is available in reading uh, for lesson two, and in that reading there is also a link to a Google document uh, with this uh, table. So if you have any comments or suggestions uh, specifically about the PBLL column, uh, we welcome you to leave them there. And uh, also, as I've mentioned, uh, the ideas that uh, are presented in this, uh, uh, in this document, in this table, uh, such as scaffolding, for example, they will be discussed um, uh, in the fundamentals in greater detail in uh, future modules. So now we have, uh, I think, about eight minutes for questions. And um, I think, uh, yeah, I will wait for Jim to ask those. OK. The, uh, a number of the questions re revolve around examples. So uh, one of the questions is, can you give us some specific examples of PVLL that meet all these requirements other than some type of cultural display or event like the Dia de los Muertos? Uh, examples of projects, as far as I understand, right? Uh, yeah, interestingly, when we were uh, working on the content for these lessons, for Module 1 specifically, um, we were surprised uh, uh, that uh, there is uh, basically nothing uh, available, uh, no really good examples of projects uh, in uh, language learning context. And the, the example that uh, Stephen presented in lesson one uh, about uh, Dios de los Muertos, uh, that was probably one of the few uh, projects that uh, was uh, kind of uh, more of an exemplary uh, type that we could use um, uh, as an example. Um, uh, if you go to the website of the Buck Institute for Education, they have a list of uh, different sample projects, and you can search them by, um, by uh, subjects. Um, if you enter world, uh, like for a uh, world language category, there are about 34 projects, but most of them are for, I believe, uh, English language arts type. So um, uh, Dias de los Muertos um, is one of the projects that uh, really fits this context. Another project that you might want to take a look at uh, in that database is a project, I do not remember exactly the name, but it was a project about a, a book that um, uh, uh, students in, I believe, in California created and um, uh, they went to Tijuana in Mexico and presented that book uh, to, to the students there. Um, so I don't really know personally of any good examples where um, uh, of projects where these eight essential elements could be um, very well reflected. Okay, the next question. Uh, the question is, um, should the feedback from teachers and fellow students be in the target language? Um, that's a good question. I think it all depends uh, on the um, proficiency level of the students uh, who work uh, on the project um, and also on the type of the, um, um, the task or the activity that they give feedback on. Um, uh, I would say if uh, one, one of the things to keep in mind when deciding whether to give feedback in the target language or in the uh, English language or the native language is the comprehensibility. Will the feedback uh, given to the um, students uh, in the target language, uh, will it be comprehensible to them? If the answer is no, then I would say um, uh, probably um, using maybe the um, the English language would be a better option. It also depends on what you give uh, uh, feedback on, uh, whether it's a feedback on some um, small question or task, or whether it's a feedback on some major um, uh, key, uh, key task or key activity in the project. A new question. Uh, 
would it be necessary for this project to be shared uh, between the same level courses or classes of same level proficiency? Can you clarify the community and audience or public? Can you read it again, please? Read again? Okay. Um, would it be necessary for the project to be shared in between same level courses or classes or same level proficiency? Can you clarify the community and audience or public? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the, the, what exactly the person is asking. The project to be shared as uh, the project to be, the same project to be used um, by different teachers in different classes that are of the same level? I think so. Okay. Um, I guess, um, well, necessary. The thing is that as, as we talked, um, when we talked about the essential elements, the, uh, the, uh, every class, because of the, one of the essential elements uh, is student choice and voice, um, I, I believe that um, the overall topic of the project can be shared between uh, the same levels of courses and uh, between the same classes. But uh, the, the actual projects, uh, the, the, the details of the project would be different for different classes because uh, if the students are given an option to, um, to choose, for example, I don't know, a driving question or uh, what the uh, learning outcomes they want to achieve, what the learning goals they set for themselves, those might be different in different classrooms, even if the uh, if those are the sections of the same course, uh, the same proficiency level. Um, so I would say the top, if, it, uh, if, if, you, if the question was about the topic of the project, then yes, it can be shared, but um, I would expect that the projects will end up to be quite different in, uh, in different sections. Okay, um, another question. Uh, could you please explain the difference between PBL and task-based learning? Huh, good question. Uh, I'm not sure I can explain the difference. I can say that uh, task-based learning, if you um, look at the literature, at the research literature, um, there is, um, uh, there are, I've actually seen a, a book chapter in which uh, the author discussed that uh, there is this abundance of terminology that is used um, uh, to mean uh, the same or different things. Uh, so task-based learning and project-based learning uh, oftentimes are used in reference to the same thing or similar things. And uh, there is no really uh, clear-cut um, uh, distinction between the two. Uh, so some people would say that um, the two are similar, others would say that they are different. I'm not an expert on task-based learning and so I cannot really, uh, I guess, argue right now in front of the audience of what the key differences would be, uh, but I, 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 I only can say that I know that this topic is um, uh, there is a lot of terminology that is used uh, in the literature um, in addition to these two terms uh, to refer to the types of um, learning that we would call project-based learning. Okay, one final question. Um, um, could an IPA, an integrated performance assessment, be part of PBLL? Integrated performance assessment. Um, um, I'm not sure I know what exactly um, is meant by integrated performance assessment. Are you talking about the um, assessment of integrated skills? Okay. Uh, yeah, if it is the um, assessment of the integrated skills, then yes, definitely. I think, um, well, we, from what I know, there. Uh, there is a, in language assessment field uh, especially, there is a movement now to, uh, uh, to move away from the assessment of discrete language skills like assessing reading only, assessing speaking only, assessing listening only to the uh, integrated assessment of skills.